From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. If ever we needed to be looking to the Lord, we need to be looking to Him today, don't we? With everything going on in the world, oh my, we could get down. But uh, at the end of this program, I'm going to guarantee that Jack will give you some good news that will lift your spirit. This first one, whoa, no-go zones looming in America. Now, you know what the no-go zones are, don't you? That's where the Islamic people take over a section. They say, don't come here unless you will keep our law. Not your law, our law, no-go zones. And then this one, oh, hip church gives biblical Christians a new label. Hater, Ah, oh, that really hurt my heart. We'll deal with that also. And then terrorists find Belgium a haven. Well, that especially hit Jack's heart because his relatives live in Belgium. He's going to be elaborating on that with a letter he just got from Belgium. But before we get into the program today, we were talking about uh, when we were in college and how you always take exams. And this one young man was trying to take an exam, and he just couldn't quite get the the answer. Is that right, Jack? Yeah, I used to cheat on a lot of the exams. Well. He's in this classroom, and the instructor says, we're going to cover some of the World War II history. And the first question is, who was the ruler of Germany during World War II? He looks around. He looks at his coat. Hart Schaffner and Marx. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good German. <laughs> oh, oh my I'll dear. tell you, it's comical, Rexella. You know, I want to say something, though. Folks, please listen. I'll be in the ministry 70 years next year. 60 years ago, I started to preach on a message called the coming war with Russia, according to the Bible. I went and preached it over 2,000 times in America. Thousands and tens of thousands got saved. And Jerry Falwell, one day, he was such a close friend, said, you know, I'm bringing you in to preach that message, and 10,000 showed up. And he said, now, I want you to put this on a record, and if you don't, I'm going to, and I'll sell it, and I'll keep the profit. And he was a great guy. I loved him. You know how great he was? For two years, he said, get all the mailing lists you can because you have a real purpose in life. I can see where you can go if you can get the funds. And he said, I'm going to pay all your bills for the next 24 months. That's the kind of man he was. Thank you. Jerry, I miss you. Well, anyway, we recorded. We got the record out. Got a couple million copies out the next few years. Now, here is the shocking thing. Next week, tell everyone, I'm bringing the exact message I preached 60 years ago. I predicted what was coming, what nations would be involved. And for the first time in world history, 60 years later, everything is now being fulfilled, just like I said then. Don't miss it next week. Oh, Jack. You know, in fact, that was the first message I think I ever heard him preach. He was preaching at our church, and I thought, wow, that is some message, a coming war with Russia. And well, I saw you, and I said, wow, and I can already <laughs> preach. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> well, friends, we're going to continue something here. Our emphasis on proving who Jesus is. You know, there's such confusion out there. I can't believe it. Now, Islam says one thing about Jesus, and our Father in Heaven says something else. Take a look here. The Quran anathematizes, curses, and damns anyone daring to say that Jesus is the Son of God. When they do, it is guaranteed that they will go to hell. This can be found in the following surahs. Surah 4, 165, 518, 6101, Surah 930, Surah 17, 111, 1938, 2391, and Surah 88, 92. Now, I'm going to ask Jack a question. How do you answer 
all these sermons that they condemn and say anybody who believes that Jesus is the Son of God will be condemned to hell. Jack, how do you answer that? Now, I've made up my mind, Rexella. I'm not going to back down for anyone. I just got a book, 1,600 cults in America, most of them denying Jesus. And one of those cults is called Islam. And I am mad at what they're saying about my Jesus. I will never burn your Quran. I'll never do anything against your people, but I will stand up for my Jesus because you make a murderer out of him, as we're going to see in this program. Oh, what we say about Jesus, the Quran is the same thing you say in your Christian Bible. It's a lie. Now, does the Bible agree with the Quran? No! 1 John 2, 22, whosoever says that Jesus is not the Son of God is an antichrist. Now, I wonder what's going to happen because God the Father so many times in the four Gospels says, this is my Son, Jesus, in whom I'm well pleased. Now, here is a religion, Judaism and Christianity, that started 4,800 years before Allah even came on the scene. It was Muhammad who discovered them. There were 360 pagan gods, one for each day of the year, for they were 360 day years then, and he chose the moon god, Allah. Now, if this moon god is going to cast everyone who says that Jesus is the son of God into hell, where they burn forever, then he has to take our god, if he's going to keep his promise, our god, Yahweh, and put him there. Now, you know better than that. Get some reasoning power in your minds when you study your Quran. And you Christians, when you study your Bible, for we got a bunch of apostates now, 300 Christians who signed the Yale Covenant. Jesus is wonderful, but Allah is our God. You bunch of apostate blasphemers, get out of the Christian ministry. You don't belong there for another day. I'd like to be able to fire every one of you. Boy, I'm fired up today, Rick. So oh, yes, you are. Now, is there a trinity? Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 19 is plain. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, Christ, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Is Jesus the Son of God? Hundreds of times it says so. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hey, God sent his Son into the world to save the world, not to send them to hell. As Cabani, the head guy, of Islam in America says, and has Rick Warren preach from all the time, when Jesus comes back, he comes back as a converted Muslim, and he preaches Allah and renounces Christianity. And he puts every Jew, Christian, and Hindu to death who believes that Christ is the Son of God. Forgive you guys, forgive you guys. Is he the son? 1 John 5, 11 to 13. This is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. He that does not have the son does not have life. These things I have ever written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, not hope so, think so, guess so. No! Hallelujah, that you have eternal life. I'm fired up, Rexella. Be angry and sin not. I'm angry at what they're teaching about my Jesus. And Rexella, here's why. The word of the living God. The Judeo-Christian Bible. First Timothy 4, 1, the Holy Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the Christian faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Spirits from hell! Doctrines of demons? I think that says enough, don't you? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, 2 Timothy 3.13, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And I'm not going to let anyone deceive you about my Jesus. In 1925, the fundamentalists of America signed 
the five fundamentals, and you would never go to heaven if you didn't accept these five things. Most of you guys wouldn't even be Christian churches today. You'd be thrown out if you didn't believe this. I preached it last week. I just name it now. First of all, the deity of Christ. Great is the mystery of godliness that God was manifest in the flesh. You see, his name would be called Jesus. He wasn't Jesus when he came. He was called Jesus. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sins. So he was God. He was born of a virgin. Isaiah 7, 14, Matthew 1, 23. He came to die on a cross. They pierced my hands and feet. Psalm 22, 16. Surely he had borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him smitten of God afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, eternal peace, was upon him, and with his stripes were healed. Number four, the resurrection. Oh, you don't believe that? You will end up in a devil's hell. Christ rose from the dead the third day. That proves he's God. Romans 1, 4, he's declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection of the dead. And he's coming again. He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And guess what? And, oh, I love Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son. He's not pulling any punches. Pray for him. He's going to all 50 capitals to preach Jesus if he lives through it. He'll be a lucky man. God will be with him. Pray for him, please. He said this, Philippians 2.10. Oh, and I think this is my favorite text. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things on the earth, and things under the earth. They'll bow to Jesus, to the glory of God. The Father, we believe Jesus is the Son of God, and he was sent to be the Savior of the world. And you'll never see the inside of heaven, and some of you Christian ministers will never see it. You've known the language, but you're an apostate. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him being abominable. Great <laughs> message, wasn't it? And all of it is from one book, the Bible. How wonderful to accept God's word and know that it is for sure to be believed because the Lord will fulfill all of his promises. Well, there are such basic differences between Christians and the Islamic people. You can't combine them, but somebody tried to. Take a look, please, if you will, at this. A professor criticized for views on Islam. Now, this professor wanted to combine the two as Chicago a Seminary. Take a look, please, at this next article. Are Allah and Jesus the same God? Wheaton College, uh-oh, gets caught in a wrangle over teaching about Islam and Christianity. Well, she has left the school. They let her go, saying you cannot combine uh, Christianity and the Islamic religion. Rick Warren, oh my, I wish I could just uh, speak to him individually here because he signed that Yale Covenant saying we worship the same God. Going on, hip church gives biblical Christians new label, hater. Well, you know, a hip church, well, that's all right. But my word, this uh, pastor, Furtick, said something. He even put out a video calling uh, the biblical Christians haters. Look at this. Sometime back, the progressive mega church pastor, Stephen Furtick, Elevation Church, Charlotte, North Carolina, mentored as he is by evangelical bigwigs like Rick Warren and Bill Hybels, felt bold enough to post a YouTube video in which he sneeringly challenged what I'd call traditional Christians to basically get out of the way because their time is past. Presumably, to Furtick, it's the new generation's time now, so step aside with your stodgy hymns and expositional preaching style. You know, it is so sad to read something like that, to say that those who are preaching the word, maybe, maybe uh, they don't have the upbeat that some of the new churches do, but nonetheless, they're preaching the gospel. And, oh, Jack, that burdens my heart to have something like that. How do you reply to a man Rexella, like this? Rexella, 
I have worked with 10,000 ministers across America in 70 years, and I know some of these birds, and they know the language, but they don't know the Lord. And this guy sounds like one of those hypocrites. They profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work to reparate hypocrites. And you're not going to see the inside of heaven. You can talk the language all you want, but here's what you should be doing. I'd like to hear some of your stodgy sermons, sir. Here's what it should be. 2 Timothy 4, 2, preach the word. Be instant in season when they like it, when they don't like it. Reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come. It's here when they will not receive sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves teachers, Rick Warren and the rest, and guys like you having itching ears. They want their ears tickled with lies. But you're going to pay the price. Revelation 22, 18. If you add to this book, God shall add to you the place written in the book. And if you take away from this book, he'll take your name out of the book of life. That's heaven, sir. And some of you guys are never going to see the inside, even you know all the language of Christianity. You've got it in your head, not your heart. Jack, you know, a very, very <laughs> strong program today. But we need to know what's going on, don't we? I didn't even hear of this vertic until this article came out. Did you? They are saying some very, very bad things about the church of old and how they don't want them to be preaching the, the stodgy messages anymore. Oh, my, how we need to speak up. And, Jack, thank you for speaking up now and for letting people know exactly what's going on out there. I didn't know, did you? I just want to say that what we see in radical Islam, we saw in Paris, we saw in Germany, we've seen in so many countries around the world, it breaks my heart. But we can't help but think, what are their goals? They want to do this in many countries, don't they? Take a look, please at the Jerusalem Post, radical Islam, the invisible enemy every day the United States and its allies maintain the refusal to acknowledge that radical Islam exists. Going on here, Sharia law. Oh my, oh my, Islam's brutal Sharia law coming to North America. Jack, I want to take a moment here. Just quickly say what Sharia law is. Will you, once okay. again? Sharia law is killing. Number one, you kill your daughter if she has premarital sex. Number two, you round up the homosexuals and put them all to death. Chop their heads off. Number three, you kill your own. That's why the two groups, the Shiites and the Sunnis, have been killing one another since the days of their creation. And fourthly, they kill all infidels, and an infidel is anyone who does not practice the Muslim religion. And this great guy, Mark Gabriel, at the university in Egypt, who was a Muslim for 34 years and is now converted, said they have murdered since the Crusades 280 million Christians Jews. Look, this is the last 24 months. I collect these articles. These are headlines from every nation on earth where they have slaughtered our people. And they say that the Jesus of the Quran is the same as the Jesus of the Bible. Hundreds, thousands, millions dead. God forgive you. And they've done it according to what the Bible says will happen. Revelation 20, verse 4, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Every Saturday, now in Saudi Arabia, they have two games, football, and they watch them slice off one another's heads. Oh, isn't this great? God forgive you. Oh, yes. God forgive you. You can't help but wonder if the Muslims are calling for Sharia law right here in the United States. Woo! Let's go on here with a couple of headlines that are very, very important. Islam experts. No go zones looming for a miracle. That's why I just said. Are they calling for their Sharia law in certain areas? We are Charlie Indeed. 22 terror camps. Oh, in the U.S.? 
Now, the FBI, very much aware of this, 22 camps in Holland, free speech on trial, an elected member of the Dutch parliament faces prison for anti-Muslim thought crime. Well, he went on trial, but he was found not guilty. Oh, thank the Lord for that. And then going on, terrorists find Belgium a haven. Extremism thrives on easy gun access, disjointed policing, and central location. Now, that article is very dear to our hearts because almost all of Jack's relatives still live in Belgium. And after we sent him the video, he said, oh, Jack, I had to write this letter. Would you read part of his letter there, Jack, And this please? is the home of the European Union, all the what nations from Europe together there. I, listen to me. This is from my cousin. Boy, is he grown in the Lord. I received your video release on Islam. If you were in Belgium now, you could be in prison for Islamophobia, spreading hatred. We are, as Belgian-born citizens, not even allowed to speak against Muslims in our own democratic country. I work daily in the center of Brussels, the capital. The Belgian military patrols the city daily and won't even dare to go into the Muslim no-go zones. These are terrible times. Muslims everywhere. I'm afraid of the day they take our homes and say, convert or die. Hang on, my dear cousin. Be faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. Jesus promised in Revelation 2.10. Well, you know, today we have expressed who Jesus really is. And he is the only one that can do two things. Number one, he can do a personal thing in your life by giving you peace in troubled times. If you only accept the Lord as your personal Savior, he is Savior of the world. Will you open your heart to the Lord and say, I accept you as my Savior, and I want to be forgiven of all my sins. He'll do it. But also, he's the only one that can bring peace to this world. He said, if I go away, I will come again. He's going to bring peace to the world one day when he comes back, when he sets his foot on the Mount of Olives and stops all of this terrible havoc that's going on in the world. Oh, friend. Will you open your heart to the Lord? Jack is going to be praying this wonderful prayer, saying, Lord, come into my life, be my Savior, and I guarantee you'll not only be your Savior, but you will experience a peace and a joy you've never had before. Will you pray this prayer with Jack? Jack. Jesus said in John 14, 6, No man can come to the Father except by me. Oh, that's just one verse. I have found 1,200 verses that say Jesus is the only way. And beginning two weeks from now, you're going to hear most of them. There is no other way to get to heaven. Jesus is not a murderer. He's the Savior of the world. Father, thank you for sending your son. Yes, your son. And how he loved us, how he suffered. But he shed that blood to save us. Without shedding a blood, there's no remission of sins. Thank you, Jesus. I see that blood flowing from your wounds for me. Say it. And now I ask you to come into my heart, Jesus. Save me. In your holy name. Amen. Amen. Did you pray that prayer? Oh, I trust that you did. After a, a, a program like today, we need to have hope. And I guarantee that when you accepted Christ as your Savior just now, you received a hope, a blessing, a peace you've never had before. Oh, how I trust that you'll write to me. And let me send you this little booklet. First steps in a new direction. We need to be walking with the Lord today, don't we? and trusting that everything that we do in the days to come will glorify him. First steps in a new direction. Let me know if you opened your heart to the Lord. We certainly need the wonderful peace that he alone can give. You know, friends, I meant what I said a few moments ago. I trust that many of you, if you hadn't accepted the Lord, that you did, and I would love to hear from you. But we wanted you to see this program once again because of the confusion out there. 
So many people are saying that Jesus is just a prophet. They're not saying who he really is. And so we were going to bring also this wonderful, wonderful video back again, Who is Jesus? Jack, you want this to be sent around the world, don't you? I told my board members and agents, anything happens to me because of the threats. I want this in every nation on earth where there are Muslims living because this is the way they hate Jesus in Islam. And they said, if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you'll burn in hell forever, plus other distorted facts about my Jesus. Get it. Oh, Jack, I thank the Lord so much for your burden to go around the world with this message, who is Jesus? We want them to have the truth, don't we? All right, friends, we want you to take a look, please, at the promo. America and Canada, beware. Doctors Jack and Rex Sullivan have been warned about Muslim terrorist organizations who are planning attacks in America and Canada in 2016 and 17. The bloody ISIS murderers already claim to be in all 50 states and much of Canada. The greatest heartbreak to believers is the blasphemy against our God and Savior Jesus by the Islamic religion. To them, he is not the Son of God nor the Savior of the world, but instead the executioner of all Jews, Christians, and non-Muslims. For details, order the most dynamic video study the Vanapies have ever released, Who is Jesus? This video indicates we undoubtedly are the rapture generation. Friends, there's the 800 number and there's the address. And wonderful, my gift, Great Salvation Themes, a wonderful book by Jack, when you call. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Who is Jesus? Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And remember, I have a gift for you when you call for the wonderful, wonderful video, Who is Jesus? If ever we needed to know, we need to know today. There's the 800 number and there's the address, so please make the call right away. Who is Jesus? And we all know that ISM is trying to give the false message around the world, saying that he's not the Son of God. And if you believe that he is the Son of God, you will burn in hell forever. You know, the other day talking to somebody, they said, oh, well, you know, they're good people. There are many good Muslims in the world, but they do not have the right message. And so many of them don't know the right message. And so pray, if you will, that we can get who is Jesus around the world. That's why. So pray with us, will you? Put us on your prayer list that every day God will use this program to reach millions of people in 247 countries. Now, we're going to look forward to being in your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. Oh, yes, he does. And so do we. So very, very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>